Hello dear friends, Patrick here. Just wanted to give you a quick video summarizing uh, the book Philosophical Classics, The Thinking Person's Guide to Great Philosophical Books, edited by James M. Russell. Um, surprise, the author does an amazing job at remaining unbiased uh, throughout his evaluation. His, his um, coverage of these books seems completely consistent. Um, just extremely well written, concise, to the point, um, no wasted words whatsoever. He does a, a summary, and then he even does a second summary as a speed read, which is like a super summary of each book that he covers. He covers 66, uh, uh, 67 books, sorry, <clears throat> and um, just a really, really well done an excellent resource for anybody that's interested in philosophy but doesn't want to take the time to go too in-depth into different philosophical works, or you can pick out the ones you like and you can follow them up individually uh, for further study. So just a really excellent uh, reference and resource. I'm definitely going to keep this in a handy spot on the library shelf. But I wanted to mention what I think is the prevailing theme throughout this book and throughout the history of philosophy itself. And that is we started uh, the great philosophical, classical philosophical uh, work was started by people like uh, Plato and um, Aristotle. and, and uh, But as soon as you get into the time of um, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, as soon as you get into the um, early classical philosophy, what you have is, see, Plato was the 5th century before Christ, right? Augustine was the 5th century after Christ. So as soon as you get into uh, the time of, of, of Christ, you have uh, uh, um, Aristotle, 4th century before Christ, right? Plato, 5th century before Christ. As soon as you get into the time of Christ, they take it for granted that God is real. Rene Descartes, right? 1641. God is the foundation. Thomas Hobbes. Leibniz, 1686. The early philosophers referenced God and they were trying to reconcile their observations about themselves, about their mind. They were trying to reconcile that with God. And the progression of the history of philosophy is a gradual moving away from God as a foundation until we reach the time of um, John Paul Sartre, the, the, the time of, of um, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, where they abandon God completely. And that has pervaded philosophy to this day. We are in the age of philosophical thought where it's taken for granted that there is no God. The prevailing attitude within any philosophical endeavor, and that extends to psychology as well, by the way. 98% of psychologists today are atheists um, at the at, at university level. <clears throat> and so that theme has pervaded. And what has that brought the world? What contribution has philosophy made to the world? Horrendous, horrendous, um, leadership, horrendous inhumanity to, 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 to one another, you know, all kinds of atheistic philosophies of global efforts to depopulate a, a country's own citizens are based on atheistic views. As soon as you abandon God, they say, well, because there is no God, then humans are just an animal. And they, they also use Darwin as a springboard. Even though Darwin was a religious man, Darwin um, acknowledged that there were a lot of things that he couldn't explain through his theory of evolution, and that he left room in his own personal mind and heart and thoughts uh, that God being beyond. And, and, and the Bible itself has no conflict with evolution. It, it, we, we read a scripture that says the earth brings forth fruit of herself. And, you know, 
these things that mentioned in the in the philosophy of Gaia, for example, there's no conflict with with the biblical idea that God has made a magnificent creation that has magnificent, you know, cre creativity embedded within it that has been put there by God to perpetuate itself. There's no there's no problem, and and all these, you know. Christian theologians or, or the established church, if you want to call it that, always got upset whenever anything threatened their own personal interpretation of Scripture. So when Newton came along and said, you know, this, or Copernicus, Copernicus came along and said, hey, you know, the earth is not at the center of the solar system, they all freaked out. It's the same thing when Darwin came along and said, hey, you know what, there's this thing called evolution and things can, can evolve over time and people freaked out. Um, but the net result, the net result of the thought that was trying to make sense of the world outside of anything to do with God and the Bible has left them in a state of complete atheism, if not even worse, nihilism and, and, and uh, chaos. So, and that extends all the way to today with people like Daniel Dennett, who is celebrated and and elevated because he's able to present strong arguments in support of his own atheism which are really not strong arguments at all they are simply man's reasoning from a standpoint of having zero faith in anything metaphysical which is the the, the normal result you're going to get writings like daniel dennett but even within his own writing he mentions circumstances of of heartfelt, um, almost miraculous level of love and compassion and forgiveness that cannot be explained through this simple, simple, you know, cause and effect and A equals B and all that kind of stuff. No, no, there's, there's things beyond the physical. There is a world which we cannot see, a world of spirit, a world of the unseen realm, which is obvious to anybody upon even a minor amount of reflection on the beautiful creation that's provided to us by God. And so it's, it's, it's a very um, depressing yet well-described evolution of philosophical thought that <clears throat> for all man's efforts, he has achieved nothing. You know, professing to, to be wise, they've become fools. And the abandonment of God has led to all sorts of, of you know, uh, Stalin and Lenin and Marxism and this idea that humans are, are, are of no value. They're just an evolved ape and they're just a plague on the planet. And all this type of absolutely humanistic negative thought to anything sacred is is um, the net result of that and and we see it in history we see it at the culmination of the the world wars world war one and world war two and just total anarchy you know just total self-destruction in in many many different areas the only hope for humanity is a a returning a repentance a asking god for mercy we are the creation. He is the creator. And we are completely and utterly dependent upon him. We have to give God the glory and say, God, help us. God, have mercy on us. This is the, the summation. And, and this simply solidifies that belief for me uh, to see it laid out from a chronological, historical perspective. Uh, it, it helps make it all the more clear. So that's my summary. Um, great book if you're interested in philosophy um, and uh, very, very well edited by James Russell. Kudos to him. I love you very much. Thank you for watching. I pray that you're doing well wherever you are. I hope you get a chance to spend time with people you love. Enjoy the fresh air. Have yourself a wonderful day. I have another uh, book on the way from Amazon. I'm looking forward to re receiving that. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. And uh, stay well. Be happy. We'll talk to you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.